Hey, what's going on? Jordan here, back in my home office slash mix room. Here uh, in my last live stream, uh, I showed you guys my old rig, uh, my old Pro Tools rig. There it is in the closet there. You can see there's the old Mac with the HD cards in and a 192 interface right beside it. But um, I already talked about that uh, and talked about how actually compared to that old rig and my old studio, um, which was, you know, dedicated control room, live room, a lot more treatment, ceiling cloud, big Pro Tools HD rig, um, how I actually uh, have ended up getting better mixes in this little room here um, compared to that space. I talked a little bit about that, um, but I think maybe where there's a misunderstanding is people see that and they think, um, oh, well, I guess I don't need any treatment at all, or people push against it and say, um, you know what, well, you can't just say that, you need to have some treatment in your room. So um, I'm going to go over the treatment that I have in this room here, which again is just uh, one of the bedrooms at my house. Nothing special, um, but as you can see behind me, I've got um, some treatment here, and I'll show you exactly what that is, and then hopefully give you some ideas of how to treat your space if you need to maybe uh, add some treatment or upgrade or, or shift some things around. Here's what I got. Uh, let me back up here. So here's the door. So here's how walking into my room. Um, to my right here, I've got three acoustic panels. So what these are is just rigid fiberglass panels. Uh, Owens Corning 703 or something like that. Uh, different companies make them. Um, and I got these from Acoustic Panels Canada, I believe was the website. I got them from, obviously, if you're not in Canada, probably not the best option. Uh, but these were a great local option for me. But you can just buy these panels, these OC703 panels yourself and cover them with fabric yourself if you want. Um, there used to be some companies that made little fabric bags that go over top of these panels, which is what I used to use. Um, but bottom line, you want to get some rigid fiberglass panels here. They're usually uh, two feet by four feet. And these ones here on this wall are two inches thick. So these are more high frequency style. So you can see my, my mix position is here. And then this is to my left. So to my left here and to my right, I've got the two inch panels. And that is going to help with the high frequencies or even some of the mid-range frequencies bouncing back right beside me. So not looking to do like bass trapping back here. These are just two inch panels. And by the way, um, these Acoustic Panels Canada ones, these came with uh, these super handy little clips. And uh, they just slide on right there. I can't really do it with one hand. Um, but you get the point. So right there beside to the left and to the right of my mix position, we've got the two inch panels. All right. Now behind my mix position here, I've got the same two by four panels, but these ones are four inches thick. So they usually sell four inch thick versions of those panels, or you can just stack two two inch panels side by side. So those are right behind because I want to trap a little bit more of the low frequencies here right behind my monitors. And then in the corner, straddling the corner, that's key if you're treating your room. And uh, you want to straddle the corners like this so that there's an air gap behind the panel. Now, ideally, this would be a, uh, a full two foot wide panel. Just because of how small this space is, I took advantage of, they offered these uh, 12 inch 12 inch wide panels, but it's still four inches thick uh, with the air gap behind. So that's helping trap some base in the corners here. That's always the starting point. If you want to know where to start with treating your room, just start with start with the corners, okay? Get panels like this and just put them straddling the corners like that. And then you can see in one of my other corners back here, oops, where is it? Right behind me here, by the way, I love that sign, no negativity allowed here. Um, I've got another one of those same 12 inch by uh, four foot base trap panels straddling this corner back here. And then there's a corner too. This is behind my mix position. So there's the other corner panel I just talked about. And then uh, I could have another corner panel here, but I've got this bookshelf and I have no idea if that works in a similar way to the actual base trap here, but I'm assuming it does something to um, deflect and kind of absorb some of the uh, frequencies 
as well and stop some reflections there. And I just decided I like I need somewhere to put my books, right? So I'm not sacrificing the entire room uh, for the sake of treatment. Again, just to recap, here I am sitting in my mixed position, well, standing. High frequency absorbers up there. There's the one I took down to show you the clips. And then behind the computer, the mix uh, and the monitors, we've got a bass trap and then uh, bass trap in the corner and then two more bass traps right behind it. And then another high frequency absorber on the other side and then another small bass trap in the back corner there. So that's it. And guys, at my old studio, I used to have a ceiling cloud way up here above me too. And I think it helped, but again, I'm getting better mixes in spaces like this. Even at my old house, I had a mixed rig and similar treatment to this and it was fine too. Uh, and actually it was better. And the thing is too, is like, yes, uh, having the bass traps is important, but again, when you're mixing on little NS10s like this, I'm not pumping out a bunch of sub, right? So I don't have a bunch of low frequencies bouncing around my room and building up and canceling each other out because I'm simply not producing them, right? So that's a big deal too, is like if you're in a small space with uh, minimal treatment like this, you don't want to have big monitors pumping out one, a lot of volume or two, a lot of super low end, like go for smaller, smaller monitors with limited, uh, more limited frequency range, especially in the low end. Uh, it's going to give you better mixes anyway. Like, trust me, it seems really counterintuitive, uh, but that's been my experience. I've mixed on, you know, the most expensive barefoots and the biggest Genelex in big studios. And, you know, it's fun to track and turn them up loud, but uh, it's hard to mix on them because it doesn't sound anything like what you hear in the real world. So, um, that's another tip too, is like, make sure you're tailoring your monitoring to the space you're in. Like this works super well because again, it's not putting out that low end to begin with. Um, that is going to, uh, that is going to cause problems in the room. So, um, that's really a big factor there too. So super limited, um, but well chosen treatment is key here, guys. Uh, Zach, no, I don't, I haven't had really any problems with the closet. I haven't had problems mixing, so that's the thing is I start with this treatment, then I start mixing, and if I ran into the situation where it was like, you know, my mixes were really not translating, things were sounding really um, different than I expected to expected them to when I got out of the room, then I would, be, I would be thinking, okay, what can I do? Do I need something above me? Do I need more bass trapping? Is there some reflection that's sounding weird? Um, I have had that before. I have had gone into a room tried to set it up and like got like a weird that weird kind of fluttering sound or like sounds like something's canceling out usually you know if you're sitting in the seat you can tell it's weird um but um yeah in this room i didn't have any problems and the mix sounded it translated really well the first one i did out of this room and so i was like okay i'm done right and then you don't have to think about it anymore you don't have to think about room treatment anymore once you do it and nothing sounds weird to you and uh, once you do a few mixes and test it outside of the studio and it sounds great then you're done right? You don't have to worry about it anymore. Uh, Ross, yes, there is a uh, carpet on this floor. And at my old studio, it was a wood floor or a laminate floor. And I put a rug down there um, right where my mix position was. Actually, no, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. I did not have a floor treatment at that studio, but I did have a ceiling cloud there. And uh, yeah, uh, in terms of low end, I should wrap that up. So um, since my NS10s here are not putting out any low end, I just check them here. These are, everyone asks me what the headphones are. Um, <laughs> trust me, it doesn't matter. These are ATH M50s, Audio Technicas. If you wanna go and get those, fine. Um, but I'm pretty sure as long as you have decent, decent studio headphones, these are not super expensive or anything. I've had them for probably 10 years. They're the first kind of pro headphone pair that I bought and I've just kept them. Uh, but the thing is, the nice thing about mixing in small rooms and checking the low end on headphones is there's no room factor, right? And the hardest thing to control, like it's easy to get these, um, you know, thinner panels here to absorb some of the high frequencies bouncing left to right around you. That helps a lot. Chances are in a small room like this, you're not going to be able to afford or it's not realistic to really try and um, control all the low frequencies. So it's just not going to happen. So again, tailoring your gear, your monitoring to the space, mixing on NS10s, which are not producing the sub, check the sub on the headphones where the room is completely not a factor. Now I don't, I don't mix everything else on the headphones 
just I don't even mix the low end on the headphones really I just check it I just check if it's if it's enough or uh, too much adjust it there and that's it and honestly I probably spend a total of five minutes messing with frequencies under 100 Hertz again that sounds ridiculous but I heard a Chris Lord Allen interview like probably 10 years ago and he was like he was like yeah I just mix on the NS10s and I don't really touch the low end and it just kind of takes care of itself I was like are you kidding me like <laughs> at the time I was obsessing with my sub frequencies and uh, trying to figure out um, how to deal with all the all of those low frequencies below you know 80 Hertz and stuff and that's what I spent the most time on my mix and when I heard him say that I'm like yeah that's BS well once I switched to NS10s and I couldn't hear all that stuff and I just checked the low end on, on headphones like this it's true I spend about five minutes on it it's magical how it just when you're focusing on the mid-range which is what really matters for a translation I'm not gonna say that there's no never any problems with the low end there is and you have to address that but it tends to just go a lot faster and kind of take care of itself um, I don't know if I can prove that to you <laughs> aside from just um, you know you gotta try it out for yourself um, so yeah guys there you go that's my mixing ring by the way or sorry not my mixing ring the uh, treatment by the way um, avoid those foam you know the foam treatment that you buy at like music stores um, that stuff's not good you want to go go with this if you if you deck your room out in that foam stuff um, you're gonna think it's good for a bit and then eventually you're gonna realize it's not and you're gonna spend all the money on this anyway these are not that expensive I think to treat this whole room was under a thousand bucks for all of these panels and you can go a lot cheaper if you kind of just buy the material yourself and put it up yourself so that's how to treat and optimize a small mix space like this guys um, so again I'm doing a free training tonight if you want some more insight on the things that actually make your recordings and mixes sound pro like not all this noise about needing a perfect room or certain plugins or going to audio college and all this stuff like it doesn't matter right there's things that actually move the needle and make a big difference in your productions and that's what I'm going to be talking about tonight and uh, in future sessions so even if you're not watching this live right now it's totally fine even a couple weeks down the road I'm probably going to have other sessions coming up so go to free recording class.com sign up for the next available webinar and uh, I hope to see you there all right take care